The cell, zines, and tifinol required a full team to complete its assessment, analysis, and conservation treatment. The project, led by book and paper conservators at the Canadian Conservation Institute, partnered with conservators at Library and Archives Canada and other outside consultants. It took a three-pronged approach. Technical analysis by conservators and conservation scientists, conservation treatment of the text block, and finally, conservation of the binding itself. In this video, we will explore the role of paper conservators, led by Senior Conservator of Works of Art on Paper, Sherry Guild, as they assessed the condition and damage of the text block, cleaned and repaired the parchment pages, and checked and stabilized the inks and pigments. As the antiphonal arrived in the conservation labs, it was in structural disrepair. To start, temporary boards were constructed by Library and Archives book conservator, Lynn Curry, to safely handle the text block so that the conservation examination and treatment could begin. Every conservation treatment begins with documentation. Photography and a condition report carefully record the state of the artifact prior to treatment. For the antiphonal text block, a database with an entry for each of the more than 480 parchment pages was created to track the condition and treatment. Carefully observing each square centimeter of media through a microscope, conservators mapped areas of pigment loss, weakness, or damage, as well as surface grime, tears, creases, and other condition issues. Here we see conservation intern Chloe Pedisode working on the first illumination, the Annunciation, examining it through a stereo microscope. For highly decorated miniatures and historiated initials, color-coded overlays were created by tracing on translucent paper over top of a full color before treatment photograph of the manuscript. These color-coded maps would be used to guide treatment decisions and precisely document areas where adhesive would later be applied. Dirt and grime had accumulated on the surface of the pages from years of handling, storage, and use in sooty, candlelit services. Careful surface cleaning of the margins and gutters was required, as dirt can absorb atmospheric acids, which accelerate the degradation of organic materials, and also act as a source of abrasion when pages rub together during page turning. Conservation intern Marie-Lou Beauchamp used a soft goat hair brush to remove both debris from the gutters and loosely adhered dust from the perimeters of each page. For more ingrained surface dirt, sponge erasers were employed. Designed for the application of cosmetics, these soft sponges minimize abrasion risk to the parchment and do not crumble, ensuring no eraser crumbs are left behind. The sponges were also tested by conservation scientist Scott Williams on parchment mock-ups to ensure that no residue of the sponges themselves was transferred. The text and image areas were carefully avoided during this cleaning process. Just treating the front and back margins of each parchment leaf required a vast surface area to be cleaned. By rough calculation, the margins of the manuscript account for more than 32 square meters, nearly 350 square feet of surface area. Ergonomics started to play a role for the conservator. Pinching a small sponge for the hours of surface cleaning was unsustainable. A system of tying the sponge to the conservator's middle finger was developed to ease the repetitive stress that was developing from extensive cleaning. You can see here the progress of cleaning and undulation in the parchment that had collected significant soot. Careful motions with gentle pressure remove a surprising amount of surface dirt onto the sponge. Not all pages were equally dirty, as seen in the difference between the pile of sponges used to clean dirt from two different pages. Also note that more than a dozen sponge erasers was used for each page. A new sponge was needed each time the buildup of dirt risked transferring back onto the page being cleaned. The loosely adhered dirt cleaned well, while the more ingrained dirt remains embedded in the parchment structure, a testament to the history of the use of the manuscript. Parchment, an untanned skin prepared by soaking, scraping, stretching, and finally drying under tension, expands and contracts readily in changing relative humidity. 
This shifting surface, as well as the aging of pigment binders, can cause the media to become powdery or friable, as seen in this blue azurite initial, or to lose adhesion with the smooth parchment surface and flake, as seen in this transmitted light image of an area of lead white. The next treatment step for the text block was therefore consolidation, the process of applying an adhesive to ensure that any flaking or friable pigments mapped in the condition report were re-adhered to their parchment support. This consolidation will help minimize any future loss of pigments during careful handling of the antiphonal. Several protein-based adhesives were considered to consolidate the antiphonal pigments due to their compatibility with the protein parchment pages. Ultimately, isinglass, a collagen adhesive extracted from the dried swim bladders of certain fish, was chosen to re-adhere the loose media. The dried bladders on the left are extracted in warm water, strained, and then dried into the clear film on the right. This film can be reactivated as an adhesive in water, as needed. The resulting adhesive is relatively elastic, and at low concentration has little effect on the appearance of the pigments due to a low refractive index. It also does not tend to change color on aging. To apply the consolidant, several methods were used. Ultrasonic misting is a technique developed at the Canadian Conservation Institute in the 1990s, permitting application of a fine aerosol mist of adhesive. This method is particularly useful for penetrating chalky or friable pigment areas with very little perceptible change in their appearance. Each area consolidated in this manner was carefully documented. For larger flakes of pigment, a very fine paintbrush was used to direct a diluted solution of consolidant underneath the flaking pigment. Both application methods are carefully monitored through a stereo microscope as very little change should be perceptible except in the security of the paint attachment to the parchment page. Parchment is relatively difficult to tear, so there were only a few minor repairs to make. Depending on the tear location, type, and surface texture of the parchment, either Japanese paper or paper fibers with wheat starch paste adhesive, or gold beater skin, a thin sheet made from intestine, applied with a gelatin adhesive, were used for the repairs. You can see a repair here drying between blotters and a release layer of spun-bonded polyester, temporarily held in place by magnets. With the pigments carefully stabilized, tears repaired, and possibly damaging surface dirt removed, the care of the antiphonal passes from paper conservators to book conservators, ready to address the structure of the binding.